Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom de Groeve from the Joint Research Center. And uh, I will talk a bit about some of the research we are doing at GRC in the field of uh, social media and uh, new communications. It's uh, work by uh, our group in, so in uh, Global Security and Crisis Management, Tom and Beate, and also another group, Frank and Laura, who work more in the forest fires um, and work with this. So I'll show you two cases that are very specific. Um, one is uh, forest fires, and uh, what's special about this is that it's a rapidly changing situation. And it has been studied a lot uh, also in the California fires and all. Um, so there, there have been very good successes there. The other one is earthquakes, and immediately after an earthquake, the impact is unknown. And only after a few hours, when the media gets enough information, we will find uh, what really happened. But these first key hours are very, very important to set up an operation to deploy. Uh, the main information gaps, we focus for forest fires on uh, the public. So uh, should I flee or what should I do? How to do this warning to, to, the, to the people? Uh, to get the very localized warnings out there. Uh, for the other one, it's more about the international teams. Should I deploy or not? And what information can help you to understand uh, how you have to deploy, uh, what are the needs and what you, should, uh, what you should take. So in those two cases, the first one, typically uh, firefighters communicate to commanding authorities and use the mass media then to uh, have a situation awareness and inform the public. But uh, like we've seen in all these cases, the public ha knows a lot. And if you set up the right tools, you can immediately warn your peers. And uh, this shortcuts uh, the, the whole thing. This, is, this worked once or a few times in California. How can this be made uh, m uh, mainstream and sustainable that it always works? That's the question. The other one for earthquakes, you have um, the early warning systems like GDAX. They know already a lot about an earthquake when it happens. They know about the tsunami, about all the l potential uh, secondary effects. And once you're in the field, uh, 24 hours later, you can do this assessment too. But in the meantime, the first three to six hours, you don't know really which effects really happened. It's just a likelihood, a potential. But if you look at uh, sources like this, the, the Twitter, the Flickr, these kind of things, there's a lot of information in there, and you can uh, answer these targeted, very targeted questions. One way to do this is uh, by reading every message and trying to curate it by trying, like on the left, there's a forest map where they try to do this. The, um, they look at all the messages and see exactly where uh, what happens. Uh, they take the relevant messages, but that's not sustainable, of course. We need to have algorithms that do these things automatically, um, either by content or filter out the rumors so that you have a subset of very relevant messages where you can then uh, derive information about the changing conditions of the fire or, in the other uh, case, statistics of the, the volume of these messages. So we're working on a framework where we can develop an integrated quality uh, assessment of all this information, which, if you apply it to the, the big stream of messages, reduces this a, a lot. Uh, one is credibility, of course. You can select your sources. You can only take twi tweets from emergency managers or something like that. Uh, the, and the other context and location, uh, messages from the affected area are worth more than those from far away. And the context is we already know where the earthquake was, we already know so much about it, so we can use that information to, to filter uh, the thing on credibility. The same thing for relevance, which is the other component, where you look more at the content, you search for a, uh, a feed with earthquake in it or forest fire in it, and not fire in another context. Um, and you try to, to uh, derive metrics that you can then combine and weigh in a, in a formula to give this integrated quality score. So, uh, in conclusion, we're really working on these kind of algorithms that can do part of the curation automatically to go from the quantity to the quality and uh, to tie in really in decision-making processes and questions. Thank you.